We left you with this convolution problem. Uh, we've got the wavelet that we were using last time. Uh, this is our uh, W over here, defined by amplitudes 1, 2, minus 1 half, uh, 0 first and second samples, and then this is our reflectivity sequence that uh, uh, we're working with. We asked you to convolve this wavelet with this reflectivity series in order to come up with the uh, signal. And uh, what did you get? What did you come up with? And how did you do it? So remember, you know, from the graphical illustration that we went through uh, the last time that, that uh, we're working with this equation over here, effectively what this equation does is it runs reflectivity um, forward in time from zero to the total length of the trace. And, but it runs the reflectivity backwards in time from a particular sample in the signal, looking backwards uh, uh, through this uh, period of time defined here. So, <clears throat> again, this is our wavelet. This is our reflectivity sequence. Uh, for k is equal to zero, remember the we get values of k minus i, which are equal to zero, minus one so on and so forth, minus two. Uh, so the zeroth value of the wavelet is one, the minus one value of the wavelet, zero, minus two, zero, so on. Um, for k is equal to zero, i is equal to zero, we're multiplying the first value of the first reflection coefficient times the first value in the wavelet. Uh, so our output here would be 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0. So we just get 1. That's pretty much what we would expect to get. Uh, again, we're, we're scaling this wavelet by uh, 1, so we should get 1 on the output at k equals 0. Now, for k equal 1, we are looking at samples in the wavelet that run from 1 to 0, to minus 1, to minus 2, so on and so forth. <clears throat> uh, the reflectivity sequence, on the other hand, runs from 0 to n minus 1, uh, as we know it up here. So we're multiplying the 0th reflection coefficient times the second sample, or sample 1 in this case, since we're assuming that sample 0 represents the first sample. So we get 1 times 2 plus 1 times minus 2. And so our output then, 1 times 2 minus 2 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus so on and so forth uh, is equal to 0. So our second sample here is just equal to 0 on the output at k equal to 1, the second sample in the time series. Okay, so for let's just do it one more. Let's say we've got uh, k minus i in this case goes from 2 to 1 to 0. So we're going backwards uh, through the wavelet from sample uh, 2 to 1 to 0. Sample 2 is minus 1 half. Sample 1 is 2. Sample 0 is 1. And then we go through the sequence here in um, a forward order from i equals 0 to n minus 1. So we have uh, <clears throat> 1 times minus 1 half plus a minus 2 times a 2 plus a 0 times a 1. So over here we get this multiplication and summation. 1 times a minus 1 half minus 2 times, should be plus signs in here, sorry about that for the commas, but we're adding all these together and we get a minus 4.5 on the output. So we could keep doing this, uh, k minus for k equal 3, k equal 4, k equal 5, and so on, to see what the output was. And that, uh, you know, that hopefully that, that's what you did, although you didn't necessarily have to do it that way. Another way to visualize the convolution process is that we're hanging, we're scaling, and we're summing. So we take the wavelet here, we hang it from the, ref from the first reflection coefficient, we scale it, by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. So basically we get the input is equal to the, or the output is equal to the input, the 
it's uh, the, the amplitudes are the same. And then we shift the wavelet down one sample, and then we multiply it or scale it by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. So we're taking this entire wavelet, we're multiplying it by minus 2, so we know we're going to flip it. We know that we're going to increase the values of each uh, sample in the wavelet by a factor of 2, so we get minus 2 instead of 1, multiplying by minus 2, so this 1 becomes a minus 2, this 2 becomes a minus 4, this minus 2 becomes a plus 1, okay? And then in the process there we're summing these together. So on the, on the sum then, when we take this output and this output, we sum them together, we get 1, we get 2 minus 2, remember we did this before, just before, then we get minus 1 half minus 4, so we get minus 4 and a half, and we get uh, 0 and 1, so we get 1 on the output. And then we just keep doing this with each reflection coefficient. As we go down the reflectivity series, we'd hang the wavelet. In this case, it would get flipped and uh, into the opposite direction and um, scaled much as this one, although scaled by a minus 1 instead of a minus 2. So we'd have basically a minus 1, a minus 2, and a pl plus 1 quarter. Uh, hanging from this reflection coefficient, and then we get the wavelet again from this reflection coefficient. So, so you kind of continue on with this process in order to get the uh, the seismic signal. Now, this is uh, this process can also be easily done in Excel, and um, we'll just take a look at Excel here briefly and. Um, uh, Kind of go through, show how this, uh, show how this process works. Uh, we've got our reflectivity series over here, or how you might set this up in Excel. Uh, this would be our reflectivity series. This would be our wavelet series here: one, two, minus one half, one minus two, zero zero minus one, one zero zero. So we're just listing the reflectivity in this column, the wavelet in this column, and then over here we have the output. Uh, don't look, don't look now, but you should have gotten something that looked like this. Now we could go about it in, in, in this fashion. For the first output, we have the first value of the wavelet, dollar $B, dollar $2 here. We don't want it to change, times the first value of the reflectivity. And that's all we get for this first output here. We come over here, we get dollar B dollar three times A two. Then we get dollar B dollar four times A two. So effectively, this is a scaled output of a reflection of this wavelet from the first reflection coefficient. So we're always multiplying back by this reflection coefficient. So if we move to the output from the second reflection coefficient, we have dollar $B, dollar $2. So we're looking at um, this uh, value of the wavelet times dollar $A3. And we have dollar $B, dollar $3 times A3. So we're looking at this times uh, A3. And then we have dollar $B, dollar $4 times um, a3 over here. So in each case, we're coming back to um, the um, coming back to this particular reflection coefficient and scaling by that value. And so B2, B3, B4 on the wavelet times this same sample. So this is a scaled version of this wavelet, and likewise we can do that for each. Um, each output, scaling by each reflection coefficient. In this case, the minus 1. Scaling that wavelet, we basically flip it. We get minus 1, minus 2, plus 1 half. Now over here on the output, the signal, effectively, we're just summing all the amplitudes 
on the outputs from each, the reflection, reflected wavelet from each output. We do that again, C3 to J3, C4 to J4, we get these values. Now there would be another way to do it. <clears throat> we come over here, we know that this sample is dollar $B, dollar $2 times A2. This is dollar $B, dollar $3 times A2 plus dollar $B, dollar $2 times A3. And notice what's happening here is that the samples in the wavelet are running backwards. Dollar $B, dollar $4, dollar $B, dollar $3, dollar $B, dollar $2 times reflectivities, dollar $A, dollar $2, dollar $A, dollar $3, dollar $A, four, sorry, not the dollar there. Uh, we can basically take this and copy it. Uh, but it's always backwards on the wavelet, 4, 3, 2, uh, and forward on the reflectivity, 3, 4, and 5. In this case, because all the other values are 0, but 4, 3, and 2 on the wavelet times, and then we have 4, 5, and 6, so we're going uh, forward in time on the reflectivity, and so on. And that would be another way to <clears throat> set this up in Excel. Uh, basically, this is kind of following that relationship that uh, uh, we've uh, noted as a definition for the convolution. So this would be the output that you, um, hopefully you got. So um, we'll uh, see how you did. Uh, but just kind of coming back in this slide here, we're just kind of highlighting the uh, Excel um, coding and uh, noting again that we're going backwards on the wavelet and forwards on the reflectivity. So the wavelet, remember, is flipped. So we're proceeding backwards from the end of the wavelet to its beginning, but the reflectivity is just uh, we're going forward in time. Okay. So another one, you know, this is just another another way that we're thinking of this convolution process. We're taking the reflectivity series, we're convolving it with this wavelet. <clears throat> Effectively what that means is you hang it from each reflection coefficient, scale it by the value of that reflection coefficient, you get a copy of it, you go to the next reflection coefficient, you multiply the wavelet, scale it times this reflection coefficient. Remember that basically reversed it and increased the amplitudes by a factor of two in the negative direction. Then you sum everything together, and this is the sum. So this, uh, hopefully, you were able to work through this problem if you tried it out. Uh, yeah, it's a fairly straightforward problem. It may, help, may have helped you kind of visualize the process that we've defined here, at least in a discrete sense, and uh, give you a better intuitive feel for this um, uh, analog uh, integral form of the equation. And then, of course, very often we see this in a simplified notation here where we use the asterisks as the convolution operation here. We've kind of ignored noise in this uh, process, but uh, we shouldn't. There's always noise, so just a fact of life. Things get noisy. So next time we'll look at um, Another approach, we'll look at uh, convolution from a matrix multiplication uh, as a mul matrix multiplication process. So thanks for joining us and um, uh, see you next time.